let me share an equation with you that while it might be unfamiliar when I first draw it or first write it, I'm pretty confident that you will know it once I explain it. And that is that Q dot equals SV, that was meant to be a different color, times, let's go for an orange, HR. And what I mean by this is that Q dot, which is cardiac output, cardiac output, which of course is the volume of blood leaving the left ventricle per minute, that is equal to stroke volume. If I've got the right color, no I haven't, I knew that was gonna happen, different blue. It's equal to stroke volume multiplied by heart rate. And this is an equation I reckon that you've probably come across before. And you could probably even tell me, look at rest, stroke volume is about 70 milliliters, heart rate's about 70 beats per minute, therefore cardiac output is about 4.95 liters in total that can go up during exercise. So that's all well and good, but that's what we're talking about. And I want you to focus here on cardiac output, is the volume of blood leaving the rest left ventricle per minute, whereas stroke volume, of course, is that leaving the left ventricle per contraction. Now, with this in mind, we're gonna sketch a couple of things out on the graph here, because I want to start talking about a cardiac output graph. So this is a graph of cardiac output by time. And we are going to imagine that two athletes go out on, let's call it a training run. So I'm going to say this is the start of the run. And this here is the end of the run. If you've done my tutorial uh, on anticipatory rise and heart rate responses, depending on the course you're on, you might have done that. It's going to be quite a similar sort of uh, process here. But we've got cardiac output. Now, what we're saying here, what we're going to argue here is that we've got a resting level. So let's imagine that resting cardiac output is here, okay? Now we know that roughly resting cardiac output, this is um, th this is gonna be in the region of five liters for most people, okay? And the point I wanna make is that in a second, I'm gonna sketch on here both a trained and an untrained athlete, and both of them will have equivalent or the same resting cardiac output. So let's, call, let, let's just imagine that's five liters just there, five liters per minute. Now, in both cases, both the trained and the untrained are gonna experience this. Now that little yellow mark there, that is what we would refer to as the anticipatory rise. We are getting an increase in cardiac output because of the release of adrenaline, which is acting on, amongst other things, the sinoatrial node to increase the heart rate of the individual. Now, I'm gonna imagine now that I'm gonna sketch, and this line I'm gonna do for cardiac response to this 20 minute training run. This one I'm gonna do now is for an untrained athlete. So our untrained athlete is gonna be like this, and then their recovery is gonna be like this, okay? So this here is our untrained performer. Now, I want you to notice a couple of things about our untrained performer. First of all, it takes quite a long time for their cardiac output to get up to its kind of exercising level. That's happened quite gradually, right? You can also notice that after, after the exercise finishes, it takes quite a long time for their cardiac output to return to their resting levels. Now, what if I was to show you that this example would be more like a trained athlete? Okay, not done it brilliantly. The green line is a trained athlete. So let's look at the differences. First of all, resting level, anticipatory rise the same. First of all, it's a steeper increase. It's steeper. They're able to increase their heart rate and their stroke volume faster. Notice as well that their exercising um, cardiac output is higher than the untrained athlete. And notice that their recovery is quicker. They're back to resting levels round about here where this one's still carrying on. So that what we're saying here is that they will get to exercise a cardiac output faster. They will also have a higher cardiac output during exercise total. Also, their recovery and return to um, resting conditions will be faster. And we've therefore got to ask the question is, well, how is that the case? How are they doing that? What is different for the trained and the untrained? So a couple of things that we want, and there's quite a lot actually, but I'm gonna give you sort of three examples here. First of all, their left ventricular wall, their myocardial wall on the left ventricle is gonna experience hypertrophy, okay? And what we mean by that is that they're gonna have effectively a more powerful pulse of that left ventricle when it contracts. Therefore, of course, stroke volume is gonna go up. In fact, let me put that in there. Stroke volume is higher, including at rest. Second point, this person might be experiencing bradycardia. Remember, bradycardia is when resting heart rate, so if I put resting heart rate is, in fact, I didn't mean to put equals, because that's not what we wanted there, is less than 60 BPM. 
So that means that during exercise, the individual has a greater range of heart rates available to them, and therefore they can push cardiac output higher. And finally, and this is a more sort of challenging one for you to think about, this person is going to have a higher end diastolic volume. So the trained athlete, the green line, they're going to have a higher end diastolic volume. Now this takes a bit of thinking about it. The end of diastole is after the relaxation phase of the heart has uh, has concluded, okay? And what that means then is that the volume of blood inside, let's say, the left ventricle is greater than the untrained athlete. So just to be clear, there's more blood in the heart which can then be ejected out. What does it become? A greater stroke volume. So these are some of the differences that a trained and an untrained athlete will have and that's what will that's what will cause them to have that very fairly shoddily sketch graph that I've done on the screen there. Hope that's useful. Thanks.